What's going on guys? Welcome back to Full Throttle RC. We got the no prep car on the workbench today. In the last video on this car, I made up this battery strap to hold the battery further forward in the car, to get some weight forward and keep that nose down. I also mentioned in that video that I'd have to make some suspension changes to the car, being that the weight was moved around a little bit, and the car would launch differently. A lot of you had pointed out that the back end of the car was rather high and that was actually because I started playing around with a few suspension changes already. The front end is more closer what I want but we'll get to that in a second. The back is definitely too high. We're actually over an inch off of the ground to the chassis plate and that's way higher than I want. It needs to sit a lot lower. The reason why it's higher is I tried to put the original rear shock back on the car. If you follow me over on Instagram, you would have saw a sneak peek of what I did here. I basically took the original rear shocks and used some fuel tubing to put a limiter in them so they couldn't extend all the way. And then I used a shorter spring, the front springs, as well as a top spring from a set of Proline Power Stroke shocks and made a dual rate spring. I 3D printed a small collar and I actually like the way the dual rate spring works and I want to try it out but I need to figure out how to get the car lower first. For now I'm going to go back to the front shocks that I had in the rear. I got away from the lightweight oil. I went to a 100 weight oil for now and I'm going to use a stiffer spring. I'm going to try out a little bit of a stiffer shock in the rear and a little bit softer in the front. But like I said, we'll get to that front in a little while. For now, I'm gonna pull these off the back and we'll get these installed with some springs. So I ended up going with the purple springs. It's the stiffest associated front spring that I have. I have some longer springs that are a little stiffer, but being that they're longer, I felt like they wouldn't allow the car to travel all the way down and they'd sit too high. You can see when the car settles down, we're now under an inch. We had about seven eighths of an inch. I did have to adjust the wheelie bar back up just a tad, but you can see when the car settles down now, it's about a quarter inch off the ground, which should be right around perfect. Like I said, I wanted to try out the stiffer rear and see what it'll do. And I almost forgot, this is the dual rate shock I was talking about that was on the car. You can probably see it a little better here. I just 3D printed a collar here that fit and I have that top spring from the power strokes and then the bottom spring from the front of a buggy shock. It seems like it works well and it's something I definitely want to try. Like I said, I want that back end to be low like it is here. So maybe I need to print another shock tower extension or something to be able to use these shocks instead. I've also thought about getting rid of the shock tower extension completely for these shocks and then removing the limiter out of them or shortening the limiter so I could get this same ride height. Whenever I go out to test, I'll have these with me for sure to throw them on there if I want to try them out. On to the front now. I mentioned that I went softer in the front. I went with a 15 weight oil with these white front buggy springs. The white is the lightest weight that I have. I think it's about a 3.3 pound per inch spring. And basically the idea of that is the weight transfer. So if I have a lighter spring in the front, softer suspension in the front, when the back goes to settling down, you can see that front lifts up easily without the wheels coming off the ground. Hopefully you can see that in there. The physics I guess you can say behind that is with the two 3.3 pound per inch springs, 
you had about 6.6 .6 pounds per inch in the front here which means if you had six pounds directly on the front axle it would allow the front end to lift up one inch being that i have nowhere near six pounds on the front end of this car it theoretically could lift up a lot higher than an inch all i want it to do is lift up easily until it hits the wheelie bar and the car can travel down the idea is not to have the front tires come off the ground and to have a hundred percent of the weight on the rear tires the other thing with it being soft is you can see that the springs are actually almost bottomed out right now and i do have just a small amount of preload in them but they're right at almost bottomed out when i put the body on it it really bottoms it out when the wind's traveling over the body and pushing the front end down or when i let off of the throttle and the front end comes down i don't want the body rubbing the ground So by having it bottomed out, I can see that the body won't go any lower than it is. The problem is it's still a little too low right here. You can see I'm rubbing the ground and it also happens with the Corvette body as well. It's a really easy fix though. You can see I got these fuel tubing limiters in the bottom of the shock here. So all I gotta do is pull the shocks off, replace those with a longer section of fuel tubing maybe a sixteenth of an inch it doesn't have to be much at all and then we'll be good to go So now with that all done, the front end's where I wanted it still. It still moves around like I like. And now if I fit the body on it, I'm pushing down as hard as I can here and I'm still not touching the ground. This mat does have a little give to it, so it does look like it would, but I'm much happier with that there. The entire way the car sits, I'm much happier with here. And the vet body seems to fit much better as well. That front end looks like it's a lot further down. I can actually run a splitter on here now, which is something I've been thinking about doing. So now I'm ready to go test out these couple changes I made over the past couple weeks. Unfortunately, it's been raining the past two days. The concrete's wet outside, so there's no point in me even trying. I'm hoping later this week I can try this out. Maybe by the time this video goes up, I'll actually have a couple test passes. Remember, if you follow me on Instagram, you may get a sneak peek at some of those passes. I was able to find another location that I could run to 132 feet, and I'm pretty excited about going try that out. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that whenever I get out there. Before I make the trip, I want to make sure the car is launching straight, and all of these changes didn't mess it up too much though. So I hope you enjoyed the video. My plan is to try this out, and if everything works like I'm thinking, I want to do a whole nother video and revisit that suspension video that I made a couple months back. My goal is to give you as much information as possible to set up your car as best as you can for the conditions you have and the way your car is set up. This suspension stuff has definitely been a learning experience for me. I've done a lot of research, got a lot of tips from you guys. And it's a lot of trial and error. So I'm hoping that these videos can help you out setting up your car. But until I can actually get out and make some test passes, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. I really appreciate all the support on these videos. I couldn't keep doing this without you guys. Make sure to subscribe if you're ready to see this car make some 132 foot passes. I know I'm definitely ready to see what it'll do. Click on that notifications bell to get notified when I upload new videos. As always, thanks again for watching. Peace.